On day one, I spawned in as a baby dinosaur. But I had a feeling there was more to me than first meets the eye. Everybody up, get on the floor. Zozo's gonna walk the dinosaur. Just then, a blaze creeper walked towards me, and he didn't look too happy. Uh, halt, dinosaur. Even though this isn't an ice age, I need to ask you to freeze. What for? I haven't done anything bad. Tell it to the pig, you lost life form. I didn't know what he was saying, but I was not going to listen to such a mean guy. I'm a dinosaur. I can do what I want. I ran away as fast as my legs could carry me. Very grateful that dinosaurs only had had tiny arms and not tiny feet. But then again, I was a lot tinier than I expected a dinosaur to be. That was because I was still a baby and only had 12 hearts. I hurried as quickly as I could across the biome I had spawned into, but because it was a wide open prairie, there wasn't really anywhere that I could successfully hide from the blaze creeper. It didn't take long for him to outpace me and take me captive. Oh no, now I'm a baby and I'm in trouble. You better believe you're in trouble, walnut brain. You're now in the custody of the Epoch Police, keepers of the balance between life forms. Dinosaurs like you had your time, but in the current time period, or epoch, you're supposed to be extinct because you're out of time. You're gonna do time in our detention center. That doesn't sound fair. There's no time like the present, and I just want to enjoy it. Tell it to the pig. You already said that. Then tell him twice. On day two, I was thrown into the Epoch Patrol prison, and they didn't even give me a harmonica to play to pass the time. I guess it wouldn't have mattered anyways. My dinosaur claws make it super hard to play guitar, let alone any instrument. Don't be a dinosaur loser for being so easy to catch. Enjoy your forever sentence in Epoch Patrol prison. I felt super alone in my cell until I heard a bumbling voice perk up next to me in an adjacent cage. My, my. What blaze creepers those Epoch patrollers are. Always picking on us unique, timeless creatures. Oh, a normal whale. Wait, why are you in time prison? You don't seem very unique or ancient to me. I'm not just any whale, you see. I'm a whale monster. Back in ye olden golden days, a large group of whale confidants, including myself, really loved reviewing monster movies. And having watched so many many movies in one go, we slowly evolved into monster movie whales. I was the last one free, until those clock-keeping cretins captured me. No one believes we exist anymore. It's quite sad, really. Well, say sayonara to your uncomfortable cell, my monstrous Moby, because I can do something those boring guards could never believe in a million evolutionary years. If you're planning our escape, my dinosaur dearest, we must be quiet, lest the guards hear but I was too busy shape-shifting into my super awesome new dinosaur form to recognize what my whale of a friend was saying. Let's blow this taco stand, literally. Boom! Our enclosures collapsed around us with one big explosion. All thanks to me and my new explosive dino form, Explosaurus. You're free now, Willie. Now let's dinosaur dash. On day three, I was back in the wide open landscape of the prairie biome, a young dinosaur running wild and free. I was as hungry as a dinosaur too, and I had to find food that dinosaurs love in order to quiet my growling tummy. There were only a few trees around, and luckily, they were peach trees. Peaches! Dinosaurs love peaches, or at least my personal hero, King Bowser, does, and he's close enough. I devoured the peaches with my big dinosaur jaws until my hunger was taken care of. That's when I noticed there was something else hanging in the tree that wasn't a peach. It looked like a a cocoon of sorts, and to my surprise, it could talk. Big scary dinosaur, please don't eat me. Uh, I'm not gonna eat you, but in retrospect, I probably would have if I would have mistaken you for a peach. Oh no, I'm not a peach. I'm just a willow cocoon, a bug type from Pokemon Red version. I was hiding up in this tree because I'm from the 90s, and the Epoch Patrol says I'm out of time. 
Well, the 90s are a bygone era, but there's no reason that you should be thrown into prison. The Epoch Patrol tried to lock me away too, just because I was a dinosaur. Can you imagine getting arrested just because you're a dinosaur? No way! I'm simply a bug. Maybe if we work together, we can stop them from imprisoning us. You got yourself a deal. Er, deal, Kakuna. At the end of that very day, Kakuna and I formed an alliance. From day four to day five, Kakuna invited me to his super cute buggy base. We bonded pretty quickly, being highly wanted criminals by the Epoch Patrol and all. Wow, buggy buddy, your home is so nice compared to those stuffy Epoch Patrol prison cells. So true. And soon, it'll be our home. Our home? Yep, yepers. <laughs> I've been looking for more friends like us. Friends from other bygone eras, seeking shelter from those nasty Epoch Patrollers. I've been thinking, well, maybe if us outcasts can all band together, maybe we can defeat those pesky polices for all time. Wow, that's a great plan, Kakuna. Power really is in digits, just like the digits on a digital clock. You're so generous for wanting to open your home to all those wayward creatures. And I'm generous in gift giving too. As a friendly welcome gift, Kakuna gave me some stone tools. Thanks, Kakuna. As much as I love your house, I think we'll need to expand a bit. I met another bygone friend in jail earlier. His name is Wise Willie the White Whale Monster, and he was pretty big. I think I'll need to build another base just so we can make sure he'll fit. I bid my new friend a farewell and headed off, careful not to run into any rogue patrollers. I wasn't sure where to build my base until I entered the Baobab Savanna. Wow, no way. It's like this place was made for me. I began building the foundation and walls for a base big enough for both me and Willie until I was rudely interrupted by a shouting voice behind me. Hey, you! I'll have to see a permit if you're gonna begin construction here. Wait, you're the guy Boss was telling us about. Boss? What do you mean? I brandished my sword and began duking it out with the Epoch Patrolman. He started shooting fireballs, so I had to run around the base to dodge the fireballs. I'm over here. Now I'm over here. Quit ruining my base. That's not nice. I ran up in front of him and, with one, one final blow slashed him to smithereens. And that's for interrupting my building flow. But at least for all the 30 posters ruined, that fight earned me 26 hearts and some cool new lightning strike powers, which I quickly tested out. Looks like this dino's got some dino might. Now time to take out these fires. From day six to day eight, it was an especially blustery day in the Baobab Savanna, where I had decided to continue building my dinosaur base. It will be big enough for both me and Willie. Although for now, I built a room just for me. This wind is crazy fast. I hope it doesn't knock down any of the stuff I built. Then again, maybe I should have thought of that before I chose a swamp to raise permanent structures in. I shapeshifted into a green stone dinosaur so I could be more wind resistant to the increased weight of my materials. While I was looking out in the biome, I noticed the whale monster swimming through the air towards my base. So, so, my good saurian friend. I was thinking of holding a bit of cinematic soiree now that I've obtained my freedom. Do you happen to have a home theater arrangement or even a flat screen we could show the movies on? Hey, Willie, I'm down for a movie night. It definitely seems to be a stay inside kind of day. What with all this wind around? Ghastly, isn't it? These stormy winds have been increasing in speed and ferocity as of late. They say it's because a titanic hurricane is coming sometime in the next hundred days will wipe out all life forms in the overworld. Who told you that? Oh, you know, a weatherman or something. That's wild. I had better visit my friend Kakuna and let him know the sad news. Later on, I was back in the Jacaranda Forest talking to Kakuna about the possibility of this world-ending storm. Oh, no. Sounds to me like an extinction level event. It's probably not going to happen, though. I have a feeling it's a made-up story by the Epoch Patrol to scare us. I don't know about that. My friend Wise Willie, the white whale monster, told me that. And he's another creature out of time, just like us. Why would he believe anything the Epoch Patrol says? So, so don't worry. 
only hurricane you need to worry about is a hurricane of Halakawandas. Sing with me, Zozo. Uh, no. No, that's okay. I don't know any of the words. Is that so? Well, then, I guess I'll have to figure out what else you can do. Why don't you go out to the Quag Gardens? I heard another creature out of time lives there. Another potential ally? I'm on it. From day 9 to day 10, I climbed high up on a huge red sand mountain. I'm at the top of the world. From this view, I can see the valley below me. I kept my eyes peeled for any creature that looked out of place, and especially out of time. While still at the top, I noticed something flying. A crimson mosquito. Wow, wee! Mosquitoes usually aren't that big in the modern era. I'll bet that the crimson mosquito Mosquito is a creature out of time. I ran down to it and introduced myself to the Crimson Mosquito. You're a lost life form like me. You should totally team up with Kakuna and me. We're going to take down the Epoch Patrol together. No way. No how. I'm Crimmy Keto, the Crimson Mosquito, and I'm not dangling with those creepers again. They put me in their prison for three long bloodless days before I escaped. That sounds like a good reason to help. Nah. -uh. You you never saw me, or rather, I'm gonna take you out before they can interrogate it out of you. Krimi Keto started biting me and began to drink me dry, but I had a clever way of defending myself. I shapeshifted into a poison dinosaur, causing my body to become covered in poisons. Drink this, Krimi! Oh no! I did! The poison took hold immediately, and Krimi Keto, the Crimson Mosquito, killed right over from its effects. That was close! He drained a lot of my hearts before I was able to shapeshift. I was pretty messed up from all the damage when my good old friend, the Whale Monster, showed up with a health potion. Thanks for the save, William. It was nothing, really. Then you ought to be more careful when dealing with others. You can't trust everyone just because you have some things in common. That's a really good point. I'll have to pass that on to Kakuna, since Krimi Kido was a bug too, and they totally wouldn't have gotten along. From day 11 to day 12, I returned to Kakuna's cozy castle, relaying the tidbit of Willy Whale wisdom that he had shared with me. And after Willy brought me a health potion, he said something that really stuck with me. And what's that? My bestest friend? Even blesser with you than Willy is? He said something like, you mustn't trust just anyone because the strangers you meet might not be exactly who they say they are, regardless of how much you have in common. I thought it was some pretty good advice, being that the uh, naturally large mosquito I met on my journey was supposed to be an out-of-time creature like us, but actually tried to kill me in the end. At least oddly specific betrayal scenarios like that only happen once in a blue moon. Right, Kakuna? Kakuna? Instead of giving me one of his normal cutesy replies, I realized Kakuna had been staring me down intensely with his big babyish eyes. For the first time, they didn't seem so cute. I have another task for you! Task that requires no critical thinking! Kakuna ushered me out from his base unusually fast. Because because we're expecting lots more friends at our base. Friends who won't be betraying us. You should go down to the quaves and acquire some iron armor pieces. In battling those pesky epochs, we'll need lots of protection. And I'm sure you'll find lots of gears there for our army. But Kakuna... And be sure to head to the Hulu Oasis when you're done. The weather there is so peaceful. Surely they'll prove to you there's no upcoming storm. I headed to the cave for some iron pieces, stocking up on battle armor, and crafting an iron sword and pickaxe. Maybe Kakuna was right. Maybe I was a fool for believing Willy and his whale tales about storms. Maybe... Who goes there? It's not you, Kakuna, is it? A voice echoed from deep within the cave. I took out my new iron sword, but I couldn't see where the voice was coming from. I, I quit the Epoch Patrol today. I, I myself hunt for you no longer. Promise you'll spare me when you come for the other patrollers. Your wrath is nothing to be trifled with. There, I saw him, one of the pig's henchmen. But unfortunately, he saw me. We started to duke it out head on, but as we slashed and bashed, he said, something 
interesting. Uh, one of Kakuna's henchmen. Kakuna's henchmen? I'm no henchman. Henchmen work for evil people. And Kakuna isn't evil, is he? With a definitive blow to the patroller in the midst of my pondering, I decided to head to the Wooshish. I, I mean, Oasis. Just like Kakuna, my non-evil friend, had told me to do. From day 13 to day 15, I walked through the peaceful Oasis biome, where the blustering winds that threatened to destroy the world were calm to the point of nearly being absent. This is such a strange and hopeful place. I can see why Kakuna wanted to send me here. It's nice. I continued to wander through the greenery of this restful paradise until I came upon a beautiful clearing where a mighty creature of wood stood tall in a silent vigil. Hello, I'm Zozo the shape-shifting dinosaur. Do you live here in this oasis? I am the eternal guardian. I have lived in this oasis since the dawn of time, and it has always existed alongside me. Sweet! For many epochs, I have watched the changing of season, and I have seen many creatures come and go extinct in their time. The great storm that is coming, I have never seen anything like it. Wait, so there is a storm coming. Kakuna told me the Epoch Patrol made it up to scare us. I assure you, the winds of change are very real. Time itself is unstable, and without proper intervention, the world itself could come to an end. Not sweet. I was puzzled by the Eternal Guardian's words, but somehow I knew there was truth in them. I had to return to Kakuna's base and warn him that the storm was more than just a story. It was the biggest problem of all time. From day 16 to day 19, I returned to warn Kakuna about the very real and very great storm on the horizon. But oddly enough, he was nowhere to be found. I headed back to my own base, the only other place I thought Kakuna might be. But instead, I ran into a lone willy. Willy, did you happen to see a small cocooned baby cutely waddle in here while I was gone? I certainly did, Zozo. But that baby was less than cute. In fact, he had an entirely new evil persona, like some sort of twist villain. I typically enjoy a good scoundrel within film, but dealing with one in real life is less than ideal. So I really am a henchman. Oh no! Oh no, indeed. And before he menacingly waddled off. He threatened to destroy some place called the Oasis. What a very strange small man. Oasis. Oasis! He's attacking the Oasis! I'll be back, Willy. I gotta make sure the movie we're living in has a happy ending. I hurried to the Oasis, unable to find the Eternal Guardian, but instead found Kakuna, who I thought was once my best friend. He was destroying the Oasis, which goes against the very nature of the definition of Oasis. Kakuna! I thought thought I knew you. You do not know me at all, feeble dinozo. You should have listened to your well friend. Must immediately trust everyone you meet. But you told me not to trust the guy who said I shouldn't trust everyone I meet. And you lost your baby Axwet too. Was it all a lie? I whipped out my trusty sword, but a growing wind within the oasis made it hard to keep my grip or make any directed swings. Oh, Zozo. We may both be creatures out of time, but it seems your time has just run out. As Kakuna exploded the ground around me, I collapsed to the oasis floor, losing consciousness. Guess they'll have to change the name of this place from the oasis to the oasis was. From day 20 to day 22, I woke up to the sound of a howling wind through the few remaining trees of the oasis. It seemed that Kakuna's evil meddling in time had caused the oasis to be just as unsafe as everywhere else in the overworld. The winds of change were coming, and now the Eternal Guardian had gone somewhere unknown. Would any creature even survive to see the day that he returned? It was hard to know, and harder still to not be afraid of the whole situation. Kakuna, I trusted you!
I screamed it into the wind. My buggy buddy had betrayed me and it caused me to shapeshift into a sad dinosaur. As I walked through the now ruined oasis, imagining the beauty it used to hold, I caught sight of White Willy, who rose from the water. Zozo, what are you doing out here? Why, this wind is as dangerous as the Wolfman, the Mummy, Frankenstein, and the creatures of the Black Lagoon all as one. And I should know, I'm quite familiar with those individual films. Willy, let's get out of here and back to my base. We braved the winds back to the Baobab savanna, where I constructed a watery enclosure for Willy to swim freely in while he was staying at my base. Together, I just knew the two of us would survive the coming storm. All we had to do was find the Eternal Guardian and make sure Kakuna didn't cause any more damage in the meantime. From day 23 to day 26, I was feeling a bit nostalgic for Spawn Point, so I went back to the prairie for a brisk walk. While I trudged through the breezy biome, I noticed a dark figure in shadowy garments being attacked by a phantom ear dragon. Oh no, my life is at risk. Please help. I'm so afraid and stuff. Worry not, shadow guy. Zozo the shape-shifting dinosaur is about to shift into high gear. I turned into a mighty dragon dinosaur and matched the phantom ear with all the fury I could manage. Unfortunately, it didn't seem to be enough to win. You don't like stand a chance or whatever. Just give up and leave me to my fate. No way, Jose. If anyone is gonna be the hero, it's me. You run, I'll keep this thing busy. Okay. Okay, that's cool. The shadowy fellow ran off, and I was facing down the phantom here alone. The fight was seriously tough. Deep down, I could feel a new power ready to emerge from within me. I summoned up a dragon fireball and turned the tables on the Phantomir, destroying it in a single attack. My victory in battle gifted me a total of 35 hearts and the power to call on a dragon fireball whenever I needed it. Told you I'd shift into high gear. Wait, uh, who am I talking to? The guy I saved ran away. From day 27 to day 31, I was still roaming the wind swept prairie, but the weather got worse again. That's when I found a cluster of sturdy iron golems walking against the gale force winds. Their strength and resilience in the face of the oncoming winds of change inspired me, and I shapeshifted into an iron dinosaur to go talk to them. I managed to convince them to return to base with me and built an iron house for the iron golems to hang out in. Later on, Willy the whale monster invited me inside the base where he had constructed a home theater setup so we can finally have our movie night. Let the soiree begin! Yay! I love movies! What's your favorite part in a movie, Zozo? I love when the movie cuts away to show us what the bad guy is doing. Like, meanwhile, in the Jacaranda forest, Kakuna was in a scary looking room full of long deceased dinosaurs, twisting time itself for his own nefarious purposes. Without that shape shifting dinosaur, I'm going to need some other creatures to do the dirty deeds that must be done. I know just the creature to bring in. Come forth, baby Sable. Answering his call, the time stream produced a baby Sable, another creature out of time. Go, 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 ga, me, baby Sable. You put on a good act, baby Sable. I know evil concealed behind innocence when I see it. Follow through with all my wicked commands, and I might let you survive what's coming. Blah, blah. From day 32 to day 35, I made the brave decision to return to the Epoch Patrol prison, knowing it would be a tough sell to get them on my side, but I had to expose Kakuna's twist villain truth. As I approached the prison I stayed in all those days ago, full of dinostalgia, I brandished not a single weapon, letting the patrollers know I meant them no harm. The creepers tried to attack, but when I shapeshifted into a harmless dinosaur, he knew I was actually harmless for real. I need to see the pig. It's about the uncute Kakuna. They took me to their leader, Epoch Pig Troll. He looked at me from behind his desk, nodding while we met in his office. Yeah, I know about him. Kakuna. He pulled a folder from one of his filing cabinets. It had a big cocoon fidential stamp on it and was filled to the brim with incriminating evidence. This guy's no ordinary creature out of time. In fact, he's been snatching up all you guys from across every century, moving you from your original times to the now, which is our time. You mean Kakuna brings random creatures from their own time periods to this time, present time? Yeah, and this time he brought you, 
one of those creatures out of time to our time, which is now. Wow, that's a lot of time. And a lot of time spent on trying to catch this time-shifting treacherous baby. He's not only nabbing people from the past, but sending them to the future too, which is something I gotta add to his file. One of my lower drones went out to investigate the Oasis situation. Apparently, the Eternal Guardian got the future boot. Kakuna sent him to the future? Why is he doing this? If I knew why, I'd have closed this case years ago. Now get out of my hair. If there's any breaks in the case, I'll be sure to send out one of my piglet patrollers and let you know we have a shared enemy, Kakuna. Let that be the only beef between us. Don't you mean bacon between us? Get out. From day 36 to day 39, I remembered that there was no time like the present to cover myself in durable armor pieces in order to protect myself from harm. In order to do that, I had to go deep into the mining caves and scrounge up enough iron to forge myself an iron chest plate and some iron boots. While I was digging down in the caves, I also managed to come across a couple diamonds. Diamonds are Zozo's best friend. Which reminds me, I should go check on my non-mineral best friend White Willie the well-watched whale. I met up with Willie in the home theater room, and it seemed that he had been expecting me. Hey, Zozo, I've got a special weapon for you, so that the next time Kakuna comes calling, you'll be able to defend yourself from his twist villainous wrath. Sweet, a new weapon. That makes me such a grateful dinosaur. Willie pulled out an emerald sword and handed it to me. This emerald sword is actually a pretty big deal as a collector's item. It was made from the set of the Emerald City in the major motion picture, the Wizard of Oz. May it grant you the power of Technicolor innovation. Thanks, Willie. I can already feel lighter while I hold this weapon. It was totally true, because the Emerald Sword had a built-in haste effect that made me faster. Later on, I was practicing my swordsmanship on some cacti when an unusual sort of mob showed up. Yellow, I am Zeep Zabook. I am from the future, which makes me a creature out of time. I could tell that it was another creature out of time. Come with me. Zozo. Yeah, your name has a lot of Z's too, even though you are from the past. Uh, never mind. Let's not unpack that. The Epoch Patrol needs your help. From day 40 to day 43, I heeded the advice of the strange futuristic creature Zeep Zaboo and met with the pig of the Epoch Patrol out in the prairie. Zeep sent me. He might look weird, but he's a trustworthy guy. Unlike the rest of the creatures from out of time, Zeep comes from a future that might be wiped out if the winds of change happen in the present. Oh, and get this, he says that the Eternal Guardian is alive in the future. Oh, the Eternal Guardian lives. I knew it. Did he send him? message back for us? He did, in fact, do precisely that. According to Zeep Zaboop, the Eternal Guardian said that the winds of change can be stopped as long as we can find a legendary artifact that can control the direction of all the winds in the overworld. Artifact that can control the direction of all the winds in the world? Yeah, an artifact that can control the direction of all the winds in the world. Sounds sweet. What is it called? The pig started to answer, but suddenly the presence of a baby sable made us both very very uncomfortable. The pig and I exchanged a confused look. Yeah, what's the deal with the creepy baby? I don't know, but we should leave. Even though the baby Sable didn't do anything, it being there was very stressful and foreboding. So we made our way out of the prairie. Baby Sable just sat there, watching the horizon. <coughs> From day 44 to day 49, me and the Big Bacon Boss headed back to my base, hoping we could find the legendary wind-controlling artifact to save the very fabric of time. We returned to the Iron Golems, who were reenacting movie scenes they'd probably watched with Willie in our home theater. If you kids like the Wizard of Oz so much, you should really rewatch that tornado scene. Learning Dorothy's windswept survival tactics could really prove useful to us if we don't get that artifact in time. Quit being such a Debbie Downer, head honcho hand. Where's your lion-like courage? I'm not a lion, I'm a pig. And before that weird baby interrupted us, I was saying that in order for that wind bow to work, we're gonna need to make some arrows. You can't shoot something down without ammunition. Or ambition. I began to craft some arrowheads using some of Willie's cat DVDs, the ones in which he used to copy films onto in a completely legal fashion. After that, I followed the metaphorical yellow brick road to the red desert, fighting against strong winds as I walked. Man, things were really 
only getting worse out here. Krimi Kido, the Crimson Mosquito, had seemed like a total square, so without him trying to kill me anymore, it gave me time to look around what was once his home. I searched around for any book that might tell me more of the windbow we've been questing for. To my surprise, I stumbled upon a desert village where I found not just any book, but a real history book. Willie says he hates books, preferring to watch dramatized movies about history, regardless of how inaccurate they are. But I know that in this instance, we needed accuracy ranged weapon accuracy in order to take down Kakuna. I flipped through the pages, trying to find any historical locations as to where the wind bow may have been. Getting so used to watching Technicolor movies with Willy made it super boring to read black and white words on paper. I left the Red Desert Village in search of the item myself. From day 50 to day 53, I continued drudging through the Red Desert, shape-shifting into a sticky-footed dinosaur so the blustering winds wouldn't pick me up off the ground. A shape-shift in Zozo Sore? Oh my comic stars, I've only seen your ancient kind in the movies. The way they portray you is always so historically inaccurate. Where's the research, the excavation, the creative choices they've made to your species within film borders on misinformation. They even went as far as to say you guys went extinct. But seeing you before me now, that clearly isn't the case. Hey, are these winds crazy or what? They sure are. You seem pretty well-versed in historical knowledge. Is there any way you could direct me to where I could find the super powerful windbow? If I can get my dino hands on that, I'll be able to put a stop to all this traveling out of our time Kakuna caused nonsense once and for all. And maybe once this is all over, they'll even make a movie about me. A movie that's historically accurate. You had me at historically accurate. That windbow definitely packs a punch. This Kakuna guy is causing you so much trouble. Maybe you could control the winds to blow him away to the past. That way, he'll have a ton of time to reflect about what he's done. By the time he reaches our present, he'll have grown and changed into a better person. I think Kakuna is far beyond changing as a person. He hasn't even evolved out of his cocoon form yet. It's like he's resistant to change. Yeah, good point. Maybe you could blast him way into the future. So at least in our time, yeah, we don't have to deal with him. But later down the line, history will just repeat itself again with all those future people. We have to defeat him in the current day. Please, where's this windbow I keep hearing about? No one will be around to watch our historically accurate Zozosaur movie if Kakuna wins, cause we'll all go extinct from the storm. And that's bad, especially for our box office sales. Yeah, sorry kid, I don't know. I don't make or write history. I just call out inaccuracies when I see them. But if you ever need someone to tell you why Jaws did irreparable damage to the shark's reputation and why evil dolphin masks of mine should have been the villains of those movies and said, you know where to find me. Rowan Antelope, out. From day 54 to day 57, I spent a long time checking every facet of the prairie for clues as to where the windbow might be. Shapeshifting into one of Willie's favorite movie characters, a Sherlock Holmes Saurus, I inspected every inch of the land with my spyglass. It would have been super helpful if the Eternal Guardian told us where the bow actually was, but I guess he wasn't looking that far into the future, being in the future and all. I heard a noise coming from the bushes. Disoriented and exhausted from my windblown walk, I thought maybe I had imagined it. Or better yet, the windbow learned how to speak and was directing me towards where it was hiding. I inspected the bush with the spyglass and ran towards the bushes to look in it. But unfortunately, I didn't find a windbow, just that weird baby again. And he threw me a note. You'll never wiggle out how to defeat me. You know Sherlock Holmes. Ugh. With my awesome investigative skills, I was able to piece together who wrote it based on their use of oddly placed QTWs. Little does Kakuna know, I am Sherlock Holmes, Sherlock Holmes Saurus. I'll find that wind bow, Kakuna, and when I do, you're toast, time toast. I looked back to the bumbling sable baby in front of me, but as I stared upon him, his cuteness began to overload me, and I started to feel physically ill. Retreating from his excess of adorableness, I continued to search the prairie high and low for anything that might leave me a clue as to where the wind bow is. Yes. Everything is going to plan. I can feel Sable Baby's dangerously cute aura all the way from here. If Zozo crosses his path, he'll be sure to buckle in the midst of his preciousness. Now all that's left is to strengthen these winds of change, usher in my massive storm, and bring forth a new beginning to the world. One in which 
I am the only one who will survive. The world will be mine and mine alone. Only then can I hatch into my true evolutionary form. Goo goo ga 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 I stole that laugh from Sable Baby. From day 58 to day 62, I returned to my base, tuckered out from all that investigating. Luckily for me, the Iron Golem film junkies had finished watching The Architect, and now they were expert home renovators. They even built me a furnace and started work on a defensive apocalyptic bunker. Wow, things were looking bleak. However, they did seem to be running out of materials, as Willie told them not to dismantle the TV cabinet. So I headed back to the Red Desert, itching to get my dino claws on some more supplies. Because no one reads books anymore, I dismantled Krimi Kido's abandoned bookshelves and brought them back for my cinema-loving golems to use. Here's Zozo! Yep, I'm back. If you build it, he will come. Who? Sorry, no one. I've just been teaching the golems to speak exclusively in famous movie quotes. Oh, uh, well, I'm off to go to the mines. Splendid! Hasta la vista, baby! Rushing to the deep mining caves, I searched around and he eventually found some diamonds! I see! see dead people! Uh, I mean, I see diamonds! Relishing in my dazzling diamond discovery, I immediately began to craft some upgraded armor and weapons. Mama always said life is like a deep mining cave. You never know what you're gonna get, but I lucked out today with diamonds. I now had a diamond helmet, diamond pickaxe, and diamond sword. From day 63 to day 66, my best friend Bacon and I pondered long and hard, completely stumped as to where our life-saving bow may be hidden. We had searched practically everywhere in the world until... Your whale friend William isn't the nicest guy in the world, kid. While you were gone, I stopped by your base, and apparently one of your golems became a super fan of the biggest movie flops of our epoch, the Golem Father 3. Willie was so horrified that he booted him out to some place I've never heard of called the Bad Movie Lands. Bad Movie Lands? That's the one place we haven't checked yet, Piggy! Come on, make haste! We can't let the world go to waste! We headed to the Bad Movie Lands, the weather the worst it's ever been. I gotta be honest, Sozo. When the world ends, this is one of the places I'll be happy to see go. No wonder this place is abandoned. It's just flop after flop. Trudging through a ground covered in rotten tomatoes, we stood before a decrepit old movie theater, shuttered up with wooden boards to keep innocent folks out, or perhaps horrible movies in. We tried to pull the boards from the windows and doors. They were not coming loose. We wanted any chance of obtaining the wind bow and maybe see a terrible flick in the process. We'd have to break in first. From day 67 to day 70, I was having a cozy day back at my base, trying my best to not think about the world-ending winds that were threatening to batter in my doors and windows. I almost didn't notice when some of the knocking sounds were at my door. There's a guest outside. I wonder if they're here to watch a movie in my sweet home theater setup. I opened the door and greeted the pig, who had been knocking for hours. Zozo, it's me, pig. You gotta come with. Another creature out of time has appeared, and he's tearing up the prairie. He took out a whole squad of my best guys. What kind of creature is it, pig? Some kind of mystical pixie from the medieval times. Come on, quickly. We hurried to the prairie, and sure enough, there was a pixie casting all sorts of wild and crazy magic spells on everything. Hither and thither, my magic doth go. Mischief and mayhem, and this time I saw I confronted the pixie, shape-shifting into a magic poof dinosaur who was immune to magic. Ocean waves and pine tree smells. My magic spells don't even need to rhyme to work. I'm just a jerk, but I can do it anyway if I want. Hey, stop casting spells at random. Bad things could happen. Look around. Bad things are happening already. Before 100 days are up, the winds will turn us into spaghetti. I know you're confused and scared by this time period. I was too, but I believe that we can cancel the apocalypse, so you shouldn't give and destroy things. My magic spells were once how I cope, but thanks to you, I now have hope. The mission that the pig had trusted me with had gone smoothly because now the pixie had been calmed. I had a feeling I could count on his help in the near future. From day 71 to day 74, the pig and I headed back to our base, one of the only peaceful places left at the end of the world. We planned on watching the movie Apocalypse Now to get our mind off the apocalypse now, but to our dismay, the best part of our base, the home theater, was destroyed. Willie was sobbing so badly, an ocean's worth of tears started flooding our base. No wonder his entire library was ruined, and so was half of our base. No one destroys my best friend's film collection and gets away with it. That was an epoch's worth of media. Now lost, all lost. As I spotted baby Sable in the corner of the 
base, I raised my emerald sword to slice Sable Baby in half. But suddenly, I felt a moral and ethical dilemma about destroying a baby. So I dropped my sword in defeat and retreated over to Will, giving him a big, but pretty small against his massive stature, hug to calm him down. However, while I wasn't looking, that stupid Sable Baby grabbed my emerald sword with his grubby hands and crawled off with it, leaving his big mess behind. As me and Willie hugged, Iron Golem approached us with great news. Not only was he still working on our bunker, but he also equipped it with a bunch of supplies. Supplies which I can use to retrieve my emerald sword. He also subscribed to a movie streaming service, which included all of Willie's previous movies. Meanwhile, at the Kakuna's base, evil plans were underway. My great plan has almost fully hatched, and once everyone else becomes creatures lost to time, soon I will fully hatch into my final form. From day 75 to day 78, the pig left me alone and didn't have any more quests for me. Nah, just kidding. He's at my house right now. The pig was standing right next to me, ready to launch into another explanation for the most insane quest ever thrust upon a mere dinosaur. Zozo, this is the most important quest of all time. The balance of the time stream relies completely on whether or not you complete this next task. You say that every time, the pig. This time, I'm as serious as ever. You know that weirdo creepy baby sable thing that's been messing with everybody? Well, turns out that he's working for Kakuna and he's been entrusted with the one crowbar that might be able to dislodge the board surrounding the closed theater in the bad movie lands. But I can't hurt a baby. You won't have to if you use this. The pig handed me a hemolymph broadsword. This is a special weapon. It deals fallen damage so it'll be like you were never even there. Do you believe in accountability, piggy? Yeah, what's that? Okay, I'm gonna go deal with that sable baby now. Where can I find him? Where else? He's in the Jacaranda Forest, probably on his way to report back to Kakuna after wreaking havoc on your base. I nodded, and then I departed for the Jacaranda Forest. From day 79 to day 84, I barged into the Jacaranda Forest on a quest to take down that sable baby once and for all. Now it's time for you to say hasta la vista, baby. I charged the infant with my infinite amount of rage but my hits weren't doing much damage. Every blow I invoked was met with a fluffy ricochet, and the more I hit him, the more Sable Baby's big eyes filled me with guilt. He wasn't even hitting me with the emerald sword he stole. He was just holding his crowbar, but I was dying of a literal broken heart. Right before my heart shattered in two, I closed my eyes and thought long and hard of what Sable Baby had done. Destroying Willie's film collection, stealing his collector's edition emerald sword, and most hurtful of all, breaking Willie's Wizard of Oz DVD. My rage became palpable, and I shapeshifted into the massive Emerald Sibiosaurus, emitting a blinding green light, which turned Sable Baby, including his big sweet baby eyes, to dust. Gaining 100 hearts from his defeat and the brand new power of blue laser beams, I gathered up the crowbar and Emerald Sword into my huge dino hands and headed back to my base victorious. From day 85 to day 89, I returned turned home for my crowbar quest, only to find that the defensive bunker that would shield us from all the winds of change as a last resort now had an armored front door. Willie the Whale Monster was really proud of himself. Every disaster movie needs a shelter where the prepared folks can hide from the fallout of the danger. And now, thanks to the wonders of iron and diamonds, we've got ourselves a true apocalypse bunker. That's fantastic. You should throw this hemolymph sword down in there. I've got my emerald sword back, so I don't ever want to have to think about the other one again. I suppose that makes it the last thing that the bunker needed. Something stored inside. It reminds me a lot of that big disaster movie, 2012. It came out in 2012. Do you remember it? How old are you, Willie? Old enough to party. Now that the bunker was secure, I went back to the Badlands so I could crowbar through the boards of the theater. Willie's a great friend and all, but I still would rather save the world than be trapped in a bunker with just him forever. I opened the theater, only to be attacked by a ravenous polar bear. Ah! What are you doing here? I'm the polar bear from the Golden Compass, and I've been waiting for them to make a sequel to my movie for ages. There are plenty of books to adapt. Didn't that movie just not do too well at the box office? You're about to not do too well 
well at the box office. As the polar bear mauled me, I transformed into a pokey dinosaur, poking through his thick coat of fur and causing him to back off and run away. Don't worry, guy. There'll always be the original source material. With that mob out of the way, I walked into the theater and alongside some DVDs, found the wind bow itself waiting there for me. I grabbed both. At long last, the artifact that controls all the winds. Maybe now we can stop that final extinction event. From day 90 to day 94, I exited the movie theater only to find Kakuna waiting for me on the front stoop. Going somewhere, Zozosaurus? Ugh, I almost stepped on you. I mistook you for a rotten tomato. Actually, maybe I should have squashed you. You're a spoiled little peach. Squash me, and you won't be able to hear my offer. Offer? Unfortunately, I've lost my most recent henchman, Sable Baby. Now that the position is open, I'd like you to fill it. My henchman before, and you can be it again. Maybe you could even be spared from the oncoming extinction if you join me, that is. Join you and leave all my friends to die? No way! You're just as bad as all those movies here. In fact, I'm gonna leave you a bad review right in your face. Me and Kakuna began to battle it out amidst the blustery Badland winds. I fired a few arrows at him using my powerful wind bow, but he was too quick in his dodges. Kakuna charged at me, snatching the bow as it flew out of my hands. You should have paid closer attention to that Aussie movie, Soto. Never, ever trust the man behind the curtain. But you were never behind a curtain. It's metaphorical. As Kakuna held my bow, he used his powers to trap me within a cage. This is bad. This is real, real bad. I gotta get out. But how? From day 95 to day 97, I freed myself from Kakuna's insidious prison by shape-shifting into a time dinosaur and unbuilding the cage by reversing time. I hope that I'm in time to protect the others. I mean, now that I'm a time dinosaur, I'm always on time. But that's beside the point. The rules of narrative tension are a lot stricter than time. I sprinted out of the Badlands all the way to the Flower Forest. There were no Blaze Creepers left to keep the Epoch Patrol Base protected. Oh no, that means Kakuna might have gotten to the pig. I ran into the pig's office and found him lying on the floor, barely able to remain conscious. Hey there, Zozo. Looks like you made it on time after all. Oh, I was too late. You're not gonna make it, and it's all my fault. It doesn't have to be, Zozo. Listen, Kuna is the real cause of the winds of change. He wanted to survive the ultimate extinction because he believed it could finally let him evolve. All that time meddling and his stealing the wind bow from you, it was all for that goal. But how do I stop him? If he doesn't blow us all away, the winds of change will. By meddling in time yourself. Normally I'd be against this, but I'm not gonna be around to see what happens. The choice is yours. Pig, no, stay with me, pig! He turned to dust and was gone. I couldn't believe my dinosaur eyes. Curse you, Kakuna! On day 98, I cried all the way home only to find my entire base destroyed, including the bunker. All of the now movieless golems were gone too. I thought everyone had truly left me till I saw Willy. Cheer up, Zozo. This isn't the end yet. It isn't? No. As characters of our own stories, we write our own endings. And this story is far from over. Kakuna doesn't hold the writer's pen. We do. So come, my dear Zo. We shall take down this blasphemous baby together. Yeah, you're right. No baby is gonna write our ending. Babies can't even write. We're the masters of film, and we're in charge of the narrative. With a newfound pep in our step, I shapeshifted into the film director dinosaur, ready to take back control of our story. On day 99, I bravely ventured out into the eye of the hurricane in the Jacaranda Forest, where Kakuna was hiding with the legendary wind bow in his possession. He was waiting for me, right in the place which used to be our meeting spot. Uh-oh, is Jojo come to see his widow friend Kakuna one last time before the winds wipe out everyone? Very funny, Kakuna, but it's time to strike 
drop the baby axe and the wind bow too. I fired my blue laser beam at Kakuna. He had his own poisonous red laser beam now to counter it with. I turned into a poison dinosaur to become temporarily immune, but the laser still did a ton of damage to me. Done already, Zozo. It would be a shame if you didn't even survive until your extinction date. I'll admit, you may be strong, Kakuna, but you're not magic. And I know somebody who is. The pixie appeared out of thin air, casting spells and causing as much trouble as he could. Pumpkin batch and fish to catch? My magic spells are totally gonna kick your butt, Kakuna, and it's gonna happen sooner. <sighs> Drat you, magical pixie. Take this. Kakuna blasted the pixie with his laser, causing it to fall from the air. On the ground, the pixie struggled to speak his final magic words. My last spell will take your wind bow and put it in the hands of Zozo. The pixie disappeared, but his magic did exactly what was expected and gave the wind bow to me. On day 100, Kakuna's plan hadn't even gone into action yet. And in fact, it's like it never even started. Kakuna turned to face me, cute as can be. H Hello there, little friend, Zososaurus. I've seen some bad movies in my lifetime, but I'm not about to live one again. Being I've already destroyed two babies over the course of this adventure, a third time would definitely be the charm. I pulled back my wind bow and pointed it at Kakuna, ready to end things once and for all. Any last words, Kakuna? He dropped his cutesy act. If you were a movie, I'd rate you one star. Firing my arrow, I defeated Kakuna once and for all, saving the world from destruction and ready to go home for myself. Finally, it was time for me to head back to the future. Now, I'm just kidding. Up from the Ice Ages. <laughs>